Wow, that's a pretty good crowd out there. <clears throat> sure a lot different than the classroom I teach in, so uh, hopefully some of my uh, skills from school work will uh, pan out for me. Can you hear me? I want to start off for a minute. Uh, I know I did a lot of uh, homework here and did a lot of writing and thinking and reflecting about what Veterans Day means to me. And it means something different to each and every veteran that stands out in front of me today. Uh, just ask them. The thing I want to think about, or want you to think about, is what these veterans have done for the country that we uh, cherish so much. About a month ago, Colonel James Baker asked me to come here and speak to uh, the veterans at the veterans ceremony. And I jumped at the opportunity, one, so I could get away from work, and two, I could come back and see the family. Uh, to come back to Albandale Lake Alfred, Polk County, it's, it's amazing to uh, how much it's changed, how much it's grown, and how tight-knit the community is. Uh, when I kind of hold Mr. Tillman and I come in, he told me about this great park that was recently built. And I remember seeing this statue out on the interstate many years ago, and apparently it disappeared for a while and it was recovered. And I'm really glad to see that. Uh, veterans, when they see things like this that are off in the distance, you know, it, it tugs at their heartstrings and wonder why that stuff is uh, lost or misplaced <coughs> and that's why I want to talk about our stories that's my biggest thing about today is reflection and remembering the stories of the individuals that sit out amongst you whether you're friends family brothers sisters please don't forget their stories that's what's gonna prevent things from happening again we're always we are bound to repeat history if we don't learn from it don't learn from people that sit on in front of us to the left and right, work with us every day, and we'll forget some bad will happen. When I come here, I pulled in and down on Saturday. And I pulled in here and I sat on these benches over here just for a little reflection, trying to come up with some things. Just no matter how much you can plan and prep for something, when it comes down to it, your uh, your best preparation is not going to be from the heart. So, as I sat down, I started thinking about how I got here. How have I almost accomplished 15 years in the military, survived three combat deployments, to where a lot of my brothers and sisters have not. And probably the hardest thing that I will ever have to do is go through a memorial ceremony downrange. To uh, None of my close, personal friends that were within my formation have perished, but to go see a brother and sister that's not going to be able to go home and see their family, uh, it really messes with me. So I started thinking about some of the stories that aren't going to be told. Parents that aren't going to be able to go back and talk about is sacrificed. Just because you don't see somebody, a veteran walking around with a missing limb or an external scar, they do have scars. They all carry them. I don't care how well they uh, hold that smile and hold it uh, salute nice and tight. Each one of them have, the, have their own stories. Whether it be the uh, World War II veterans or any engagement since then. We have all suffered. There's approximately one million World War II vets that are still alive today. And if we don't capture their stories, they're going to be lost. I highly encourage you, whether it's your grandparents, aunts and uncles, 
to sit down with a video recorder or a tape recorder and capture that. I saw an uh, article, on, or, uh, article online the other day where a daughter never heard her father talk about his time in Vietnam, World War II. He just kept it bottled up. She wanted to, he never ever talked about it. And then one day she saw that there was going to be a veterans convention in their local community. And she took him there. And when he got there, he was a totally different person. She didn't know the man that she was observing from afar. He was among his brothers and sisters and, and reminiscing. Even though that they had different stories, because no two service members' stories are the same. I don't care if you're in the same helicopter cockpit or in the same foxhole. Whatever that significant emotional event was, it affects him differently. So, she just sat back and observed what her father was doing. And he couldn't remember what he had for breakfast the day prior, but he could remember what he did when he was storming that beach. And he remembered his buddy that fell. And he remembered banging up somebody else. He remembered getting hit himself, like it was yesterday. And when he left, she felt that the, uh, she had cracked the nut, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but, by doing this, it exposed her dad and told it, let him know that it was okay. Because for so long, he kept that stuff bottled up. And when you take somebody, you can give somebody a release like that, it's like him him a blank check. My father-in-law, like many of you, out, um, many veterans, suffers from Alzheimer's and dementia. I cannot believe he can't accomplish simple tasks. And it hurts me to see a man that was a helicopter gun pilot, lived in Flamestown 719, was an artillery officer, was a tax attorney. Individuals, and all of you out here are the same. We've accomplished so much, but yet we become broken, whether it's inside or outside, whether the scar is visible or not. So please remember to get this information. All you need is to crack that nut, and hopefully that information, will uh, you can report it, and hopefully allow those individuals to start their healing. If it's taken this long for them to heal, hopefully that's the start. One last uh, reflection I want to talk about is a trip that uh, on my second tour from Iraq, I come home on mid-tour. And if any of you current veterans or within the past 10 years have traveled through Dallas-Fort Worth and many other uh, large airports, there's a welcoming committee. Nobody organizes it, you know, as, you know nationally, but there's uh, agencies out there like VFW, Dave, and other Wounded Warriors, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Those individuals and other agencies are out there giving soldiers and sailors and Marines that welcome home. I tell you, when I left to go to Iraq, and actually all three of my deployments out of Fort Hood, there was this little lady, called her the hug lady. She hugged, she's still doing it. But since like 2003, she has hugged every service member that's left Fort Hood to see them leave and when we walk back in the door. She does it not for money, she does it for the love of country and the love of the soldiers. But as I got off the plane in Dallas, rushing to my connecting flight, not expecting this, but TV cameras, you walk through the door, you just got your bag, and you're just trying to get to your next flight. And of course, there's a parade out there of people. All the people I spoke of, Girl Scouts handing out cookies, Boy Scouts handing out gum and water. You've been on a trip for four days, and all you're looking for is the light at the end of the tunnel to see your family. It's that one moment that you have before you get home that resets your clock. No matter how tired you were, you walk through that door and you have a smile. You 
see those individuals handing that stuff out. And as I'm walking down, I, you know, shaking hands, I'm dragging duffel bags and backpacks and cookies and calendars and trying to make my way out the door, there was a set of veterans out there. Some are handing out cigarettes to the soldiers that needed that nicotine fix from the long flight home. But another one was out there flagging cars down. And I stopped for a minute and I was like, sir, what are you doing? He's like, I'm flagging you a ride home. He was out there. I was like, well, why are you doing this, sir? I was like, you know, I, I can get the door by myself. He's like, I never got my thank you and my welcome home. And I'll be damned if I watch another soldier come through these doors or come back home and not receive a welcome. I can't tell you how many times I've been uh, asked or, hey, thank you for your service. You're my hero. I'm not a hero. None of this stuff on my chest when I hang my boots up can buy me a soda at the store. When it's all said and done, it's the memories and what you remember of the individuals that are behind you. And if you can't capture that information for your families, for future generations, like, where'd they go? They must have left. But the ROTC, they're in the back. Right there. That's the future generation of what I do and what you have done before me. Back in July, I went to the Naval Academy and was part of the commissioning ceremony for my uh, um, Marine Corps uh, cousin. I was able to get his first salute. It took me 15 years to get this point, and I got to salute the guy that's been in the Army for about 20 minutes, or the uh, Marines for about 20 minutes. <laughs> but I did it out of respect. I respect every one of you that are out there. Thank you for your time. I really enjoyed being asked to come home and see everybody. And God bless all of you. Please remember uh, those that have gone before us.